Hello, everyone. Welcome to the DL. Uh, before we get into the podcast and the YouTube series and everything, first and foremost, we're starting season four. I just want to thank everybody for the first three seasons, our guests, the viewers, the listeners. Uh, I'll tell you what, it warms my heart to see people uh, tell me how much they appreciate some of the content we're putting out here, the things they learned, the connections they've made. I know I get people texting me and hit me up on LinkedIn and email me pictures of them watching me on their, you know, their living room TV talking about things. Uh, obviously, I love this industry. I love the things that are going on on it. And to me, it's, it's really one of my passion. I'm, I'm really fortunate to be able to say I found the thing in life that I'm passionate about. And this industry is one of those things. And another thing I get asked quite often is, Tyler, how do you find people for these episodes? Where, where are they coming from? What goes on? Well, really, I'm on social media a lot. I look through magazines. I see news articles hit my inbox. And I, if there's anything new or interesting that I haven't covered before, I always want to go have those conversations. And I sometimes I know nothing about these companies at all, except that I saw something and I reached out to them and was like, hey, man, would you like to would you like to come on an episode of the DL? And usually they say yes. Sometimes they say no. So what I really like about this episode with quick loads is, A, I know nothing about trailers or how containers move. I've watched a video of their product. I'm like, man, I have never seen something like that before. So I reached out to them. They said yes. Uh, the person we brought on here, it's Chris Chris Jenkins. He's the he's a, He does sales for them. They're definitely a smaller company that's growing up, figuring things out, bootstrapping it. Passion to my heart. It's a lot like diesel laptops. So this is a great conversation with him. You can, you definitely get a sense of a personality. If you're a salesperson and you want to learn how to have a conversation with somebody and make it entertaining and interesting, just listen to Chris during this podcast episode. So with that, without further ado, go ahead, watch the episode. And again, thank you for everything. And thank you for coming back for season four. Welcome to season four of the DL. I am your host, Tyler Robertson. And if you haven't noticed, you've been watching, we got a, a just a great new background here. So Kara, who's behind the camera, she painted this herself, designed it. It looks great. We got a lot of new surprises. We have a lot of great guests lined up here for this season. So as we approach the end of the year here, 2022, great to start the new season. And we're gonna kind of kick things off. And as I do everything on this podcast, I love to talk about new products, new services, new technology, all these new things that are happening in the market. So today I brought on someone from a company called Quick Loads. So I have Chris on the show. So Chris, welcome to the first episode of the new season, man. Hey, thank you for having me. We're uh, really happy to be here. Well, let, let's just, again, I always like to give the high overview first. Quick loads, like what? What is it, and what does it do, and, and how long have you guys been around for? Um, we've been around uh, eleven years. Um, we are um, primarily shipping containers, but we can do everything from palletized uh, material being on and offloaded to dead equipment. But but pr primarily twenty and forty foot shipping containers and the ten foot pods uh, loaded and unloaded with a smartphone from the cab of the truck. No cranes, uh, no chains, no straps, uh, just one guy. He can be a, a disabled veteran. He can be a, an old dude like me who doesn't like to get up on icy decks. Uh, he can be a petite woman unlike me. Um, and she doesn't have to throw straps, but we, we load shipping containers robotically. So these are and, these are basically robot trailers, essentially, right? Like, and I'm sure as we're doing this, we'll show some footage of people on the YouTube channel and everything. But are these like standalone trailers that attach to trucks, or are they? Can you put these on the back of straight trucks, or how? What's yeah, the apparatus we, we look have, like? We have several different models. We have a, a bed-mounted unit that's uh, that does 20 footers in a 20k and a 40k, and you can. Uh, have them on uh, single axle, double axle, say like an M2 uh, Freightliner. Or we have the trailers that can be pulled with a pickup truck, a one-ton pickup truck. But then we also go up to 40Ks with 80,000-pound uh, capacity pulled by a semi. So if you, uh, you want to get in the hot shots and you're not sure you're going to be good at it, we have a trailer that can do 20s that's, that doesn't require a CDL. 
up to a 40 foot. Uh, we can customize up to 53 foot that will uh, pull on 80,000 pound shipping containers. Now you may have to get a, uh, uh, a license to pull them, but we can make them. So I've seen, I, I watched a couple of videos, right, to practice this. And it's just like you said, it was pretty cool. They, they backed a trailer right up to a container and the driver's in the cab and literally uses their smartphone and is able to load that container right under the trailer or, or the back of the truck. So I, I guess I never really paid attention to how do people do it today? Because I actually have a container here. I'm, I'm guessing like a flatbed trailer must have just, or a tow truck guy must have just they, dropped it off. Or what? how do they do it now? They do it many different ways. At the ports, they'll do it with... Uh, cranes that are that are just amazing um, and they're millions of dollars and, and they'll drop the uh, shipping container onto them. I don't think drop is the term that they use, but uh, when we look at the life expectancy of our competitors that are having these gently set on them, it's not as long as ours. So, um, but typically it's a, it's a YouTube fail uh, a lot of times when they well, let me say this. They can load them with a winch, but the same winch that loads them doesn't offload them. So then you have to get creative either with a crane. Um, I'm seeing crane prices anywhere from two to four grand, depending what size crane and what size, what part of the country. Uh, giant forklifts, bulldozers, even to um, bulldo uh, tying it to a tree and yanking it off. Some of the other... Uh, Videos will be, say, to put it in reverse and hit the brakes. But I think, you know, when you start talking about shipping containers and uh, a, a not so controlled environment, that there's a you'll probably be on YouTube again for a fail. Yeah. So, I mean, like this container we have here right outside my building, it's just like on the dirt back there and everything. If I call a guy up, is it literally them like hooking a strap up to it and wrenching it, like dragging it up onto something? Or I got to imagine there's not yeah. a bunch of lifting apparatus that they can pull up to with the truck like in the back of yeah, my building. Um, when the headhunter called me on this, I was kind of looking and I had, um, I had a friend and you know, best friends, what their jobs are. Their best friend's job is to try to kill you. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? Cause you're, you're always telling these tales and it's with your best friend. I was with my best friend and we were uh, out with the shotguns, but, um, we went to move. He got a good deal on a 40 footer and, um, they were going to pull it on with the um, winch, and it was at an angle in the woods. So I was the guy on the big John Deere with the front loader because I had a John Deere. So um, I almost died. So when the headhunter called me, it's like, hey, there's this opportunity on this uh, company that loads shipping containers onto trailers. I'm like, oh, no, that ain't that's not going to work for me. I've already tried to kill myself once like that. But she said, no, look at the uh, – watch the video. And I watched the video, and I told my wife, this is amazing. I said, I'm going to work for this company. So um, the, they've never had a, a reportable accident. All the crazy stuff is done from the cab of the truck. And you're right. Outside of having a, a, a crane or, um, you know, a giant forklift, they're pulling these things on with a winch. And how they can get them off, uh, once they get weight on them, then, the, then it gets more and more crazy trying to get these things off a trailer. Yeah, and I, I've seen some of your other competitors, too, where they have, like, a big strap or some big apparatus they have to, like, attach to it, and the guy has to be back there to, to do that, and then they got to just drag it up there and everything. So the first time I saw the video, I was like, how in the hell is that thing even pulling that thing up onto the onto the trailer? But it is really, obviously, some engineering yeah. work went into, went into this whole thing, and it literally takes less than three minutes from the video I saw of you guys being able to load up one of these containers. And I saw a lot on the website, and I listened to your founder and CEO speak at Freight Waves, I believe it was, pretty recently. And he talked a yep. lot about how this changes things and makes things better, right? So there's always – we have a better mousetrap, a better product. But what's the benefit for the user? How does, this, how does this make them more money or save them time? Like what's the value to someone? Um, I, I think a lot of people that move shipping containers will agree – if you can get in and get out uh, of one of these situations in under an hour, uh, life's been pretty good to you. You didn't lose any fingers. You didn't lose any toes. You got it loaded and you're on your way. You're making your set mileage amount. Um, so everything's looking good. And then comes the unload part. So basically, the, the huge benefit is the ROI, the return on investment. Um, the three minutes, three minutes is... Um, 
that's made for salesmen. Uh, but typically, if you have your CDO and you do this for a living, it's it's quicker. They just put the three minutes for me. So when I'm demoing these things, people aren't making fun of me. So it's really a lot quicker than that. I, I, I'm a good driver. It's just that that whole backing thing is uh, uh, questionable. But, but if you do this for a living, it is typically under three minutes and same way with unloading. But you just back up to it. Um, load it with your cell phone. If your cell phone dies, it has a brain box. You can get out and run a cord from the brain box that's on the trailer. It's not a cell phone connection. It's Wi-Fi. It's built right into the trailer. Uh, so when you start looking at a return on investment of three minutes to load, three minutes to unload, you start talking about a lot more shipping containers getting moved in a shorter time, which kind of is a big deal right now going on as if I've heard the news correctly. I you mean, you don't need to talk to me about supply chain problems. Trust me. We've been, we've been, <laughs> we've been battling chips and shortages and everything else going on for a long time here. I'm, I'm you under the table and seeing if you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I think everyone's starting to realize how important logistics and moving freight is. I mean, that's the, that's the interesting thing about our world is people don't realize like that thing they bought at Walmart came all the way probably from overseas somewhere and went through shipping containers and boats and trucks and just, just warehouse, like how many warehouses that thing probably touched before it actually got on the shelf. Just absolutely like exactly. boggles my mm -hmm. mind on, on this whole industry. It's just, it's just massive. Uh, the mobile app. Um, I've, I've never seen someone operate a, a trailer essentially from a mobile app like that before. Was that always a piece of it or is that something new that was added to it? Um, I, I shouldn't tell you this, but we literally have, I believe, as many engineers and computer people working here as welding and fabricating. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get more welders because they're funner to talk to. The engineers, they're, they're introverts, and they don't really like talking to salespeople because we have a contagious disease. Um, so It's because I'm you guys ask for stuff all the time. That's... Watching, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. it's not no, it, you, you salespeople are always asking for things. I know. I got engineers and salespeople, too. It's always like, I want this thing. I want that thing. And the customer asks for that. So I'm just giving you a hard yeah. time, man. I get it. It's always the customer. We need these. Sean, we need these. <laughs> well, so, no, that's – I mean – a lot of people don't believe this when they when they have a business, but at the end of the day, everybody in a business is a salesperson and we're all tech companies at some level. And a lot of people probably wouldn't look at your company and be like, hey, you guys are a tech company. But I, again, when people watch the video, and I, if you're on the audio, I highly encourage you to go to their website and watch the video. Um, you can just tell looking at it like, okay, that's not simple for me to understand how that works. It had to have been a little bit of a complex thing to get built. So who built it? Was it the founder and CEO or was he a tinkerer? Or was it, uh, you got a bunch of investment money? Like how did this thing get started? And I, I guess he saw the problem and thought I can, I can build a better mousetrap. Yeah. And, um, I found this to be true. I have quite a few engineer friends and it's like, when you tell an engineer, I bet you can't do this. It, it drives them wild. And, um, someone said he couldn't do it. And he, uh, I think 22 patents around the world later, he's like, yes, I did. <laughs> so um, he is an amazing guy. And you're right. I've seen him uh, come out with custom builds for people. I've also seen uh, sell the product. Um, we are a startup. Um, and the reason you haven't seen us is because every dime's going back into R&D and uh, making the mouse trap produce the traps quicker. So um Hopefully you'll start seeing him more. We're, we're now doing conferences and we're trying to um, implement dealerships. But uh, Sean Jones, um, I mean, he's an amazing person, very smart. Oh, sorry, I got that got caught up in our, our company joke about how salesmen found those to get. <laughs> but no, he is, a, he, he is an amazing engineer. Uh, his sons work here. I believe they're third or fourth in generation engineers. Um, but the one thing I think is amazing, and I'll just say this real quick and let you speak, but um, when we go around to the trailer things, he's he's still uh, a builder at heart. He's a construction guy from uh, after he graduated uh, engineering school. He didn't really like the engineering booth, so he did construction. He's a builder, so I watch him walk around and feel the welds of our competition, and um, he's he's been building trailers now 11 years, and he's pretty good at it, so... Um, 
we do make a, a beautiful product, great welds, and we always welcome people. If you're ever in northern Appalachia, um, swing by and I'll buy you donuts and uh, we'll walk around the factory and we'll let you look at um, hairy redneck sweat over welds. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, nor northern Appalachia is not that far from uh, Columbia, South Carolina. So, and I love a good factory tour. So you, you probably will see me up there, up there one of these days. Yeah. And we have a guy coming in tomorrow from Columbia, South Carolina, to take the tour. Yeah, no, I, I, man, I love a good factory tour. So maybe I'll, yeah, I'm gonna hit you guys up on that. Come up there with my camera crew, do a little thing. I think that'd be, I think that'd be a great oh, time. Be so, um, I'll, and, I'll, I'll celebrate you with donuts and coffee. <laughs> well, hey, and I will say this: I, I like, I, I respect and I understand where where you guys and your ownership's coming from, right? Because, I mean, I was in my garage and dining room table with just me and nobody knew who I was. I had no budget, no nothing to go do anything at all. So I, mm -hmm. I know the grind, and it took us a lot of years to get to where we're at. And it just it's a big snowball, and it's, it's hard because you can't – you want to keep making your product better and expanding. Exactly. And it's hard, to, it's hard to decide where those dollars go. So trust me, if anyone gets it's the – Yeah, oh, yeah. it, it is such a balance. Uh, I, and I have to be really careful because I want to ask for stuff, but I still understand that we're um, – I'm coming over from 30 years with uh, McKesson Pharmaceuticals where, you know, uh, there was no budget. I mean, we had gold cards for lunches. It was <laughs> it was truly – it was truly dangerous. But now it's like we, we have to watch every dollar. Or we got to uh, keep in consideration that startups and the hot shots – uh, they want this product, but you know, it's you got to keep it affordable. Um, it, it is amazing starting a business and seeing on uh, on inside that every dollar counts. Um, you're well, exactly right. I'll just leave well, it down. hey, I, I was gonna say I'm I am right there with you because I I see a lot of companies that take a lot of money. And they just go blow it willy nilly on a bunch of things and like, oh, we got to go raise more money. And they go raise more money and take on more investors and do these things. But when you do it the way you guys are doing it, which sounds like the way I did it, is like you said, every dollar matters. And you really have to decide, is this the best use of that dollar? And you lose that when you have a big pile of cash to burn through. So it usually makes you a stronger company. It's a slower scale up and mode, but you usually end up being yeah. a much more you know, fiscally, financially stable company and have a lot more respect for things. So I, I totally get it. So I, I want to go back to the product though, because when I saw your, your CEO do it, he did it at a freight waves live event in Tennessee and the trailer was actually like 900 miles away. And one of the things yeah. that kind of got talked about a little bit was, well, man, we got robots driving trucks coming down the pipeline and um, you're unloading a truck remotely with a, with a mobile app. Is there, is there a play in that in that world where just robot? I mean, we're talking about yeah. robots. You're doing things that humans are doing now, right? Like, is that is that where it's going to get? Is this where it's going? It, exactly. I like to. I have a joke that I tell to the guys around here. I'm like, "Come on, Elon. What's taking so long?" So that's my little joke. I'm like, "We're we're ready for autonomous." Um, like I said, it, we can do it remotely. Um, we have products coming that are going to have. Um, self uh, hybrid generating uh, power axles that can help with acceleration therefore 35 percent savings on fuel um it's it's amazing what they're doing with the product but yeah autonomous we're we're pretty much ready i just it would just probably be us working on a connection um but that's i don't want to go into anything highly tech because i am a salesman and they told me when i came in here and shut the door Listen, you're gonna have to have a babysitter if you start talking tech. So uh, <laughs> you, know, you, you guys must have the same people at our company because we tell our salespeople like, do not get over your skis. Sell what we have today, not what we have tomorrow. <laughs> like, just just stay stay in your lane. I promise you, we're trying to come up with a bunch of cool products and services and and, and all these things going on here. So I, I I understand. Hey, small business scaling up, doing things, limited resources, and you're a manufacturer. Mm -hmm. How I mean, I know what my supply chain's like. We talked about earlier. Like, how's it been for you guys? Like labor, raw materials, like it what what's going on there? What are uh, you guys seeing? Um, would you want me to start first with labor? <laughs> I'll, I'll start first with yeah. labor because I am labor. Um when I I saw the product, I wanted to work here, but um there is some risk of joining a startup. You don't get a wrapped vehicle. I mean, every salesman knows if you don't have a re a wrapped F-150, it's not a real job, right? 
So I had to not have that. I had to have a regular F-150. Um, it was br It's brownish, and it's not cool orange and white of our colors. Oh, sorry. This was about labor, <laughs> not me. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I got caught up in there. Um, but there, it, there's a risk, but I, um, it's kind of cool to see. Um, since we did Freightways, we had a lot of interest. Then we just did NADA and actually took the trailer down to um, Nashville to do the um, – the NADA show there for the trucking conference and trailer conference. And it was amazing to see because um, when you produce this thing, um, you know, we, we have all these welders and fabricators and we're seeing the product every day, but most of the time the, uh, the people who see it for the first time, or you try to tell them about it, they give this look like you're on drugs and I'll, I'll, I'll recognize it now, and I joke about it, but at first I was kind of offended because I thought they thought I was lying. Do you know what I mean? And I would be like, listen, I'm not lying. This is real. They, they don't believe um, it. We, we have the same problem with some of our tools. Like, that's impossible. Like, no, it here it is. Here's how it works. Yeah, that can't be done. You're yeah. like, it, it can. And then they make it personal because I'm from West Virginia, and, I, you know, I'm missing <laughs> a couple of things. You know, not not the perfect young uh, Uber freight guy that's presenting a, a pristine thing. I'm like, uh, no, this is real. So as far as labor goes, um, uh, we we're, we're continuing to try to hire stuff, but it's very difficult in this setting to have people that really want to show up and work hard all day to produce a product. But um, that being said, we have given increases to our uh, jobs. So I know things are going good with us because now we're actually, you know, having bonuses and stuff. So it's kind of cool to see the company come out of what, what I call was scary and now have a place where we can start to build a really good work environment for people, give uh, increases and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool seeing that part of labor go from scary to. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the startup. Li I mean, that's a small business life, right? Like it's the ebb and flow. And it's like you said, you're always walking that line. And I think I bet I guarantee you a lot of our audience listening to this are just nodding their heads right now. Like, oh, yeah, I've been there. I, I've been there. I, there was times I was like, this is years ago. I'm like, man, I, I, how are we gonna make payroll this week? <laughs> like, You have those you have yeah. those things, but, you know, you, you get through them and, and you do all these things. So who's for you, who is, who's your core, who's your core buyer? Like who's your target market that that's buying these things? Um, well, I'll be honest right now. Um, it's going to be construction, tow, freight, trailer sales. Now I could tell you some, some huge names, uh, DOD, some rather large box names that you're starting to see 40 foot shipping containers, uh, show up in their parking lots. Um, but we've kind of just, uh, been in like the, the standard, uh, mom and pop seems or where we're seeing a lot of our resales. Now, are we having upper level meetings with, um, with larger box stores? Yes, but, um, we're not really right where we can produce them. And, um, there is some danger of, you know, writing contracts with, you know, companies that have, you know. 752 lawyers yeah <laughs> um, because, um sometimes they don't understand supply chain like axles cylinders uh hydraulics um electronics well, uh, and they just don't come next day anymore we're on uh we're on month nine of a legal contract negotiation for a seven-figure deal over here so i i feel your pain dealing with attorneys <laughs> like it just it feels like it yeah. it feels like it never ends and i can tell you when they own nuclear power plants it's even worse so all the all the fun <laughs> stuff we're, we're we deal with over here as well uh so no i mean it sounds like things are going good it sounds like you guys are starting to get your feet underneath you and get out in the marketplace and and do all those things so um, are you, are customers, do they buy direct from you or is it all distribution that you have out there? That's, um, that's a good question. We are, um, we're tomorrow, we're going to meet with one of the possible first dealers that we're going to implement. And, um, <clears throat> we've been direct sales, um, from the get go, but now, um, we're going to start looking at, uh, having dealerships, which throws a whole new monkey wrench of you know, setting retail prices, discounts, volume discounts, yeah. uh, riskless stock inventory dealership networking. Um, and that's above my pay grade. And I want it to be, I always want to be out doing sales, but, um, 
Yeah, we're, we're looking at dealing dealers. Um, so uh, we're trying to find people that see the value of our uh, product and would like to join us. Um, now, we're not going to ever be able to probably produce um, 100,000 of these a year, but um, we are producing them in, in a better mass. So if you're looking for uh, to partner with someone that makes a really unique product, we're, uh, we're open to dealerships. Yeah, no, it sounds great. Sounds like things are going. All right. If people want to learn more about your product, watch some of these videos, what's the what's the website they need to go to to do that? Um, they could go to the I'd say first thing is go to the YouTube videos, um, because if you if we if you call us directly, um, it would probably be uh, I would go to quickloads.com, obviously, but uh, probably go to the YouTube video first. Because, like I said, when when you first start watching this, um, if you don't see it actually work, you probably won't believe 90 percent of the stuff that comes out of our mouth. So um, I honestly I, I really love it when someone calls in and be like, uh, listen, you guys gave me uh, I have this addiction now to YouTube watching these trailers uh, do their thing. Then, uh, then that's how I know I have someone that's qualified most of the time if they call in and they haven't watched it. A video it's just from seeing the short stuff in our web uh so it's not really as good as lead as it could be yeah like you said when you saw it it's you're just like amazed yeah no i i was i was really surprised the first time i saw it i'm like wow i've never i've never seen anything like that before so anytime i get a chance to do that share a story and again i like to share stories about the companies so i'm glad you know you're able to get on the show here talk about a little bit of everything um, it's been great. So I appreciate you having come on the episode. Um, anything I forgot about anything you want to mention that I, I happened to leave out? Um, I just like to say this, um, currently right now, um, I see so many recruiters and so many, uh, freight and trucking companies talk about driver retention. Um, and I would like to say this, what, what if you had a product that was driver attraction? What if you had a product that disabled veterans could do? Uh, women could do, and your older guys that have been great uh, employees for 20 years, but they're getting too old to get on icy decks or climb in and out of the cab or load dead equipment or do the palatai stuff. Um, this, this product is the answer for a lot of people. And when you start talking about driver turnover, the added cost of our unit um, will keep drivers in the seat and even put them in the seat once you show this, it's a it's a mechanism to get people into trucking. Yeah, no, good product, and you're right. There's a lot of benefits besides just the the thing that it does, right? The impact it has on your employees yeah. and retention and attraction and all those things. So, Chris Jenkins, great for coming on the show. Thank you very much, man. I really appreciate it. And again, quick loads with a Z dot com for everyone yeah. that wants to go check it out and see what it's about. We'll drop a link in the show notes for everybody. And we're going to call this episode a wrap. So again, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Like, subscribe, comment, all share. All these things tremendously help us here at Diesel Laptops. And remember, it's not just diagnostics. It's diagnostics done right. And we'll catch you on the next episode.